How's up, everyone? It's your boy, a talking marshmallow. And today, we're going to have a wonderful little talk about Choose Your Legends 5, the 2021 edition. This Choose Your Legends, honestly, I'm a little disappointed. Maybe even a little angry, even. That's because they've gone and done Gatekeeper dirty. They've gone and done Marianne dirty. To talk about this, we have to start from the beginning. Alright, so the first character we'll be covering is CYL Erika, who looks kind of like Lynn put together with Ephraim, and they had a child, but it's actually just her twin sister wearing her clothes. So, she comes with binding Ronald Reagan leaf as a funny weapon that oh, only has, let's see, six celery special trigger, effective, five to all stats, boring, reduced the damage. Oh, and uh, yeah, no follow up. So, five effects in all. Pretty silly, but we are in generation five. I guess it's to be expected. But when you think about it, no, 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 no. It's so stupid. This is like incredibly overpowered. This is a character that can crush just about anything. More than just armored and cavalry. They just, just kind of get crushed a little harder. This is one of these so-and-so called answers to Fallen Edelgard that has appeared. Well, sort of. Edelgard still has that damage reduction. At the very least, she doesn't remove damage reduction. Only has some on her own when she does the attack. But anyway... <clears throat> So she comes with a really powerful E skill. Search Sparrow, as I've seen from the video, manages to recover her HP based on her maximum cooldown. Now, this cooldown reduction seems to be based on whatever she could get. So if she has acceleration, she can only get 50% rather than uh, 70%. We can thank God for little favors, but it is still very, very overpowered. So any damage she takes, not only do they get reduced, but she quickly recovers it. It's kind of a sick joke. I have no idea why they do this. Now, like, we have these really powerful offensive units. And get, guess what? She's for free. So Playing tank is, is not going to work anymore. Because you have characters like these that will just completely obliterate you. Yeah, I mean, looking back on it, I was talking about how, oh yeah, at least she can't break damage reduction. But does it really matter? Because she has an effectiveness against armor, she pretty much cancels it out anyway. So Edelgard's going to die an extremely and painful death. You'll probably have to count on someone like uh, Supreme Ultimate God King Bike to protect you from one such as this. Because not only do you have to deal with Luna, but you also have to deal with Moonlight Bangle. This is a really stupid thing. Oh, okay, alright. So we have this thing where you can't negate a character from negating cooldowns. Uh, I mean, like, w w what is this? You, now, back then, using Guard was something that you had to sacrifice some other good B slots for in order to be a proper tank. But now, tanking doesn't really mean squat when we have characters such as this coming in and kind of just removing your defenses. I mean, the only thing you could really do is hope for damage reduction. But she's incredibly fast, so you're going to have to have someone with a base damage reduction that can actually handle it. Otherwise, she's just going to outspeed your spurn or anything like that, and it would have been kind of pointless. And on top of this, she also gets a Kanto. So, oh yeah, sure, you know, we beat the living shit out of your unit, and we're just going to walk away right afterwards. So you might as well be a ranged character. That's the problem with Kanto, and why I like it so much, but also why it shouldn't be in this game. Because it, the map is really small, and you have this horrifying cannon that can just blast your enemies to death, heal up, then quickly retreat as if nothing ever happened. It, it's ridiculous. I mean, like, look at this shit. Like, deal extra damage based on the, the foe's defense when special triggers on top of your Luna. And you have a base rate of 20 on top of whatever cooldown you have. I just don't get it. Why, why do they feel the need to create something like this? You know, this character is overpowered. We all know that they would release overpowered CYL units, but in this case, this is too much. We just had a B slot that allows cavalry units to no follow-up, which is perfectly balanced. It's a good skill. 
it is a great skill. In fact, I want to get it and give it to, uh, oh, what's her name again? I don't remember her name, but she has a Flame Lance. I don't really <laughs> know her all that much. All I know is that she hates beasts a lot, and I was going to give that B slot to her and have her just toast Edelgard to death. I'm sure you know who it is, but just please, I don't remember, don't put me it's very embarrassing. I'm a little old, I forget things. Especially since I don't even play Fire Emblem Heroes all that much anymore. It's just, uh, it's just really disappointing. Uh, a lot of the old meta dies out artificially because of shit like this. It's like you can't, you kind of can't use your old units anymore. It's just not going to work. But you know what? This kind of setup makes it so you can't even use your new units anymore. Which I'll get to in a little bit. So, comparatively, we have this one. We have Marth. CYL Marth is, as you would expect, Marth. So he has a falchion. He has a cooldown reduction. Of course, why not? You know, everybody should have one, right? <laughs> and then we have, oh, okay, five to all stats. As long as you're within two spaces of unit. Okay, we've seen this already. Oh, by the way, there's also something really cool. If you have and extra bonuses on your allies. This is the most important part about it, your allies having bonuses. Then you'll get no follow-up, you'll get five extra damage, you get heal, and most importantly, you get advantage right afterwards. This is extremely, extremely good, okay? This is, this is actually absurd. First, he's fast, so Spurn and other crap like that isn't gonna really work on him, especially if he were to get all those ridiculous stats. He also have no follow-up to deal with that, so uh, good, good luck if you're your, your unit that um, that tries to uh, stop him. He's, he's a very good and solid tank for uh, your team. I think he is going to be something that's worth looking into, because anything that has no follow-up is extremely powerful as a tank these days, especially what we've just seen with the likes of uh, Eureka, because we're, we're bringing speed back. We're bringing speed back into the uh, meta. I have reasons to believe that guys who just relies on, um, who just relies on being able to stop enemy from uh, doubling, it, it's not gonna work anymore. This isn't like uh, way back then when everybody and their mothers have their ability to uh, stop someone from a follow up. That's not gonna work anymore. Now you need a lot and lots of speed. And thanks to this setup, he can get it in spades. Now, this is, in a way, comparable to how um, the old school Eureka used to have it with her. Um, she has the ability to double a uh, whatever the highest double, uh, whatever the highest bonus around two spaces around her. So she's kind of like that. But use generally, you know, you when you use tactics and such, it's like six, six to all stats. And, well, Marth gets 5 to all stats, a little lower, but you have to also consider all the other bonuses that comes with it. And on top of this, now this is why I praise regular Eureka, and why I will praise CYL Marth. He doesn't need to have a bonus. So, I mean, we we're, were thinking about, oh yeah, we can shut down Marth, we can give him the evil low, we can stop his bonuses. No, this isn't bonus doubler, this is different. This, you just kind of sit sit there and you get in combat bonuses. Dude, currently, we don't have any way to shut down like massive amounts of in combat. Uh, I suppose there is one guy you could do it, but you know, Bramimon is not really going to do much to him. I, I honestly don't think that Bramimon is gonna do much to this dude. Marth is just kind of going to just chop him in half if he tries to attack. Oh yeah, you can shut down uh, to everyone's support. That's great, but you know what? I'm Marth. I have. I have like a million speed, and I'm going to rip you in half. I'm going to hit really hard too. Yeah, sure, you can stop. Well, actually, now that I think about it, no, 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 no. I don't even think that works either. I think Bramimon can't even stop him because the effects come from him himself. His allies aren't providing these stats. It, it one, it's just him fulfilling a a trigger. Him fulfilling the idea of having two uh, more allies with um, bonuses that can allow him to, uh, well, do shit like this. Yeah, he just needs to have allies within two spaces of him, and that's about it. As long as they meet the uh, 10, 25, and 60 bonuses, 
what's Bramimon gonna do? Yeah, I, I think that CYL Marth is one of these units that, uh, a little over buffed because there's a. Why don't we go in with that? I think there is some overwhelming bias in IS. There, there's a lot of uh, favoritism going on. These guys are second place, by the way. These guys are second place CYL characters. So you'd think that, oh, yeah, you know, in the first place it would be overwhelmingly powerful. Well, that's not quite the case. But anyway, let us continue. So. He also gets a second skill. Now, mind you guys, way back in the day, or <laughs> way back in the day, more like last year and, the, and every year before, second place do not get a second skill. But, well, favoritism. Right now, people like, people in IS, they like Marth, they like Eureka. So they're gonna just slap them on that, slap them on that second skill and, you know, make them into really powerful units, they don't give a shit, because they're IS, they, they run the show, they can do whatever the fuck they want, that's fine, but you know, it's, they, well, uh, I mean, alright, so there's no precedence over this, that's fine, I mean, it's not a big deal, I, I'm actually fine that, you know, Marth is getting what he deserves, but, well, see, the problem is, is that it came at a cost, it came at a cost with, uh, first place, which we will then discuss after we talk about Marth, but anyway, why don't we finish with uh, Marth, and then we'll go to that. So Marth, oh, hey, when he uses his uh, Fire Emblem, which turns into Shining Emblem, oh, he gets six to all stats to all his allies, oh, and, you know, he grants allies, and, you know, six turn and, you know, blah, 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 So Legendary Marth is also known as SHIT! This, this stupid Marth combines all the good about young Marth, and legendary Marth and Marth into this horrifying creature that has all their specials and is just honestly I just I just don't get it why why, why would they do this <laughs> why would they make a character like this when there's only second place right and they also come with distant pressure a very good distant counter skill because you know what a distant ward dis distant whatever that other thing is it's, oh, whatever, dude, you know, you, oh yeah, you can only counter one type of guys, why don't we go back to countering all types of guys, and give them free stats, we'll just give them a little bit of penalty, you know, when they, when they attack, they take five damage, no problem, you know, right, that's balance, <laughs> well, I mean, Marth also can heal that right at the end, but, you know, we're not gonna discuss that over there, but Distant Pressure is one of these stupid skills that I find to be pretty stupid, they're like uh, tier 5 skills, if I were to describe them. I'm pretty sure it's probably just an upgrade to uh, this encounter itself, but um, like the earlier Swift thing. What was it even called again? Shit, let me, look, let me go back to look. The Surge Sparrow. That's right, not Swift Sparrow. Surge Sparrow. These are tier 5 skills that um, I think is a separate upgrade from uh, Swift Sparrow 3 and stuff like that. But anyway, it's, that's not really important. Uh, the important thing is is that we're going to get a new series of power creep. We're going to have a uh, the stupid things where, oh yeah, you know, eventually we're going to have attack plus five during combat. And then you have your vantage build that will be really... You know, when you're looking at this and characters that can reach already 70, 80 attack and you re raise their attack even further... I just can't help but feel that the future of this game is a little... Uh, daunting for old characters they could at least at the very least i hope inherit these skills which probably they could and because they should only have two unique skills to their own so this is just a skill that they can uh, inherit all right but anyway let, let's go to first place because first place they're uh, very disappointing and it makes me sick it makes me angry it makes me wonder why the hell do we even have like first place second place anyway because it doesn't really matter it made some sense back then, but now, let's not make any sense at all. Let's make the second place characters better than the first place. So, alright, so let's go with Marianne. Marianne's got a, uh, well, got a funny little tome that has, let's see, if we're counting speed plus three as an effect, which honestly, at this point, eh, 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 I think I'd value acceleration plus one a little more, but alright, let's go with that. So, 
Then the start of combat. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. If false HP is greater than 50%, yeah, 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 speed res minus 6. Okay, so that's another regular thing. And then you get the low on top of that. Okay, so that's the third effect. And then, oh, initiate combat. Reduce damage first attack by 70%. Oh, yeah, okay, so, you know, reducing enemy attack by 70% surely makes it so much better than Eureka's broken ass weapon that comes with no follow up and all that wonderful jazz. Oh, yeah, you know, I. I I'm sure being able to negate like 40% extra damage makes up for the uh, makes up for the acceleration, makes up for the no follow up, and the five to all stats and yeah 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 blah, 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 that well an offensive unit should have. Okay, okay, maybe not the five to all stats. We can we can forget about that because speed res minus six is probably a little bit better. But still, still I would prefer to have a weapon with no follow up if I'm going to be an offensive mage. I need something. Like this. I need a no follow up or something like this with, so I can make sure I guarantee to do two hits on someone. I also want to make sure that I have an acceleration plus so that I can unleash a skill to try to take out my enemy. But here we have a character that does this. Oh, what's this? If I initiate combat, most importantly, you have to initiate combat. All right, after combat. Grants another action with an ally with the highest HP around two spaces. Okay, so that's already kind of a bit of a trouble to um, to ensure the right unit could have it because it's. I mean, sure you could purposely try to do it, but the battlefield is not exactly generous. I don't think um, you're going to always be able to make sure that the the character you want to have another action. And on top of this, okay. On top of this. They get restricted movement to one. Like, what? Excuse me, what? 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 What, what is even the point? You know, I, I, I struggle to think what what the hell was the, even the point of, of all this, of, of being able to get them to uh, move again, only to restrict movement to one. Say, oh, Marianne does it in this map, okay? Uh, all right, so to do so, we would purposely would have to move Claude up. Yeah, we would have to move Claude up and then hit. Uh, no, even then he wouldn't be able to hit. Okay, maybe uh, Beelit? No, he might have to get a reposition. Okay, alright. Yeah, this does, this already looks like shit. Looks like, oh, if I want to get another unit to move, they can't because they, they just don't fit. You have to be within two spaces of Marianne, and they're all ranged units, so they don't fit. I, I'm, I'm trying to think, okay? Um, yeah, the only way I could think of it happening is if he gets a reposition forward, so that Belith can strike down... Well, even then, I don't know. That, that wouldn't work, because Marianne would have to attack. Okay, alright. Um, yeah, Marianne would have to be, like, really... Clean like to the bottom right of that uh, flying horse pegasus thing with the bow. Yeah, that might make it work. Yeah, if she can get over there through a re reposition, that could work. But anyway, it's, uh, it's, it's just a whole bunch of things that doesn't make sense. It's... First of all, like, why is there even like a three charge requirement? She's gonna need outside help in order to do this. If she had acceleration plus one, or minus one, or whatever, you, you know what I mean. If she has that, then, oh, okay, well, at the very least, if I make two attacks, I can do it. Well, then again, she does have, um, she does have Time's Pulse, so she has that at the very least. So she can do that once. Let's see. Grants another unit. Oh, but then again, hmm, this could also have some potential. Now that I think about it, it does work on dancers, right? Hmm. Now, this is a what-if situation. I mean, it has to... It has to work. I think that, um, first of all, Marianne needs to hit twice for sure. So she needs to build up her speed as fast as possible. And then, uh, I guess this is to stop her from doing it over and over again. But what if we use Heavy Blade? Hmm. Hmm. You know, I, I was just thinking, Maybe there's a way where we can set it up so that uh, Marianne and a single other dancer, or singer, or whatever, 
could repeatedly move themselves over and over again and wipe out the enemy all on their own. I, I suddenly had this idea for a second there. It might work if I... It, it might just work. I have to think about it. I have to see it, see it working. Let, let's say uh, Belith is, is uh, a dancer, okay? So Marianne, oh no, let, no, okay, all right. how about, how about this, how about, um, Lysithia is a dancer, okay, so Marianne moves up, kills a thing, oh, but she would have to dance first, a p person would have to have no movement, well, okay, all right, fine, fine, well, let's do it like this, let's do this, and then, well, it would be useless, but if she were to get tossed over there, I can I can kind of see the potential. I, I just have to uh, I just have to um, run a few tests if I end up getting her. But I think that there might actually be some potential in there. I might have judged this a little too early, but it would still be nice if we have uh, two charge rather than three. But I guess it is a way to prevent some sort of abuse. Now that I think about it, it just came to my mind. It's like, you know, it being three instead of two. There's gotta be a reason to it, right? And then it just hit me. It, it, it could be something like this to prevent her from doing some nasty nonsense. But what if we were to have a character that has dance or a, uh, you know, the infantry? There's there's an infantry blade thing that you can have for um, for infantry C slots. But is that only for? melee weapons? I have to look into this, but it, it might actually work out. If I have a dancer that does this, we could end up having Marianne just moving over and over and over again because the dancer allows it to. But it, it, they, she has to be the only teamed up with a dancer. That could actually work. Now that I think about it, this could be a very disgusting technique and I might even summon her just to try this out. Because right now, I feel that people will think that she's underestimated, which she is. I honestly think that when you look at the comparison between the two, it feels like, uh, well, who exactly is the first place here? But if you think of techniques like this, it might actually work. It might actually work. I, I'm thinking about it, but you have to hit so hard that you can kill someone repeatedly. Hmm, this could actually turn into a really, really nasty situation. I'm gonna have to summon her to find out. This could turn into an extremely nasty situation. We can forget about attack speed unity. I think that the Swift Sparrow nonsense that we saw earlier, uh, not Swift Sparrow, Surge Sparrow, that, that I think would be better on Marianne. But if she does get pe penalized for whatever reason, it could turn into an outright massacre as well. Hmm. Especially since she needs to be within two spaces of an ally. Hmm. There's potential. Well, let's just put it like that. There's potential of a uh, of hideous disaster if if uh, what I think of works out. Although she doesn't do extra damage from skills, there's a potential for a horrible, horrible thing happening. She just needs to make sure that she can build up the skills necessary so she cannot be guarded. But nowadays, hmm, I don't even actually see many people use guard to be honest with you. So this could actually work out. You know, the whole reason why people don't use guard is why uh, sometimes, you know, the e Eureka thing is kind of, kind of feels like, you know, they went out of their way to stop guard, but hmm. anyway, I'm just talking to myself here. Let's go to um, let's go and talk about our pal Gatekeeper and Quarter Day, because I originally was a little mad about how they treated Marianne, but I, when I stopped to think about it, there's potential for something very evil, very very evil, and you've just learned it from me. Uh, if if, if I thought about this earlier, I might not have reviewed it so quickly. But I've just thought about it. There's there's potential for great evil here. Anyway, uh, let's go and, um, and talk about Gatekeeper. Now, Gatekeeper is actually what I'm really disappointed at. Okay, so here we have the Gatekeeper's range. Alright, and now anyone within that range will get attack and speed plus 5. That's great! I always do like guys who can give attack and plus speed. 
it would be nice if he has something else to give along alongside that, but you know, not everyone should be legendary. Uh, uh, Styl Lucina, and besides which, that range is already massive, so there's really no point. He's kind of a general, so uh, let's see. He also can lower enemy attack res. How wonderful as a tank should. And if there's three of them, oh, foe cannot make a follow-up attack. Okay, let's go back to that whole topic about how. What does it matter? Because everyone who is worth a shit is going to have no follow-up if they're going to be on, on the offense. Yeah, sure, I mean, yeah, okay, you you have a lot of dev. You have even more dev. You have dev some more, and then you lower their attack some more. That's great, and that's absolutely wonderful. Uh, in fact, I'm very happy for you. You have a lot of defense. But what does it even matter? Because Eureka can just erase that defense. Do you see that Moonlight Bangle? That pretty much turns her Luna into fucking Black Luna. Or worse, Eclipse, depending on the skill that she uses. I think it could add up to uh, Eclipse if she equips uh, Aether. Yeah, that, that's pretty nasty stuff, yeah. Or, or close to uh, e Eclipse. And yeah, have 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, the more I think about it, the more I think about Eureka being an illegal unit. But, Marianne could have some potential. I, I just need, I can't wait to actually try it out. Man. And I, I, it's stuck in my mind and I can't wait to do it. It's going to be an unusual summon. I might have to give it a try. Okay, so anyway, here's our wonderful gatekeeper. Summoning is evil to kill people. Oh, but wait a minute. Someone managed to slip past, but not around me, the gatekeeper, because I have obstruct four. Uh, or so I wish that it would be obstruct four. Honestly, detail report is... Yes, I know he would have something that would obstruct people. Come on, he's the fucking gatekeeper. But, you know, I was kind of hoping that it was built into his weapon. Or I was kind of hoping that he would come with Obstruct 4, not a prep version of Obstruct. Because this now means that we won't have characters with Obstruct 4 to uh, create new strategies. We'll have to rely on Gatekeeper himself to do such a thing. But, of course, as you see, these, this is very handy. You can stop all kinds of people from moving past Gatekeeper. Gatekeeper can block them from doing all kinds of nonsense, including Wings of No Mercy. So when we have something like this, this is what gatekeeping is all about. I just kind of wish that we had a weaker obstruct four or something, but maybe we might have that. Maybe we won't at some point. But this is what obstruct should be. You're using up your B slot for something horrid like this. But then I come to think of it. All right, so he's a he's an infantry he's an infantry um, home, right? He doesn't have his B slot to use anymore, but not that it matters because we just saw his stats. His stats are kind of humorous: 51, 17, 43, 36. So he doesn't really stop re magic all that well. Yeah, he can like put up a bit of resistance by not being able to cause someone to do a follow up attack. But like I said earlier, it doesn't really matter, because there's so many different ways to just double someone nowadays with no follow-up and built into the weapon or the B-slot, doesn't matter. There's so many different ways that Gatekeeper can die. Gatekeeper is also green, so there's a bit of an issue when a red unit decides to come uh, knocking down the door and be like, Hey, you know, um, you see here, I I'm, a I'm this guy with a guaranteed double. You know, your um, your foe cannot make him follow up attack. We'll just bump into mine, negate each other, and then I'll double you and you die. He he needs a little bit more resistance if he's gonna be this slow. But the problem is, well, he doesn't. He's going to die painfully to magic units. And even if we were to stack them, okay, that's adorable. Then we run into guys like Eureka who kind of just removes that defense altogether. All right, fine. Maybe not Eureka. Some other dude comes by. Fine, but you still have to deal with like Luna and and uh, Moonbow and other stuff like that. But uh, hey, at the very least, you know, fucking fucking Dead Eye won't kill you. You you block that shit, right? So there's that at the very least. At least now your close reversal, which is a very good skill, which I can't wait for the attack version to come so I can slap it on my vantage unit. 
to give you five additional defense on top of what you already have. But honestly, it would have been great if he was faster. It would have been great if he was faster. Because, you know, having speed, and actual speed, and being able to prevent enemies from follow-up would have been really nice. But sadly, he is extremely slow with his 17 speed. And then we finally look at this. And once again, I must remind everyone that this is the difference between a first place and second place. But who exactly is the first place again? I don't know, dude. There's a lot of bias. And I, I don't know. It's When I first saw this, I thought to myself, you know, why do I put up with this game? I kind of don't want to put up with this game. But I do have a lot of Google points, so I don't spend money anymore. I just use my Google points to um, purchase units. When COIL comes about, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to summon for Marianne. I don't know what I'm going to do about Gatekeeper yet. I like Gatekeeper, but he's more of a novelty item compared to uh, Marianne, who might have some potential for disaster, like I said earlier with um, that setup. I'm not sure yet. I have to see. But once I have determined its use, there could be some really, really disgusting setup that I can't wait to show everyone. But until then, I have to think about it for a bit. For now, let us just think about how our pal, Gatekeeper, is just a novelty item. See, when you're a tank, generally you want to um, be able to double someone unconditionally. But you don't have that built in. Fine, then you have to give up your seal slot for a quick repose. But then you think about it again, since I'm so slow and people are gonna no follow up me, you're gonna negate you're gonna end up negating both the weapon and the um, quick repose at once. So you end up sacrificing your seal slot for no reason at all. And then some his resistance isn't exactly really high either. His stats are kind of like really low because he, he's a uh, range unit. So, it doesn't really make any sense to me. This character doesn't make any sense to me. If he was, um... He needed something else. When I was thinking about Gatekeeper, I was expecting a C-slot that gives him uh, Omni-save, so he can save anyone. He can cover everyone. But okay, fine, we have the Obstruct, that's okay, that works too. The Obstruct is really good. But when you block people, you want to be able to actually do something. But he doesn't do that. His defenses aren't even all that great either. So we need to think of something to, to help poor Gatekeeper. I, I need to think of something. I'm not sure what it would be. It could be something down the line. But he needs something to help his uh, silly 17 speed. We might have to manually boost his speed. I don't know. But we need to do something about this. Because he's actually really squishy. I honestly don't think that 43 and 36 is... Well, that great. I think that he, he needs some help. But um, anyway, that that's just me thinking. I mean, he, if he could just at least have like a built-in guard or something, for God's sake. Something. He doesn't have anything that a tank should have. Except for uh, the ability to stop a follow-up attack. Ooh, that's a big fucking deal. Ugh, Jesus. I, I just can't get over how badly they screw over Gatekeeper. He could be a lot better. But anyway, I think I spent way too much time on this topic and um, put a lot more effort into talking about this than I should. So for the time being, I, I will hopefully hear something in your comments that will prove me wrong, make me feel better, and then everything will be okay again. But for the time being, I'm not really happy about IS right now. I, I, I don't know. If I find another way to use my Google points, I might end up just quitting this game altogether. I have to think about it. For now, I do have Google points. I might just use the Google points for summoning on CYL too. Because honestly, I'm sick and tired of cell phone games now. I have enough things I can do on the cell phone. Back then, I don't. But now, I have... I'm really busy now. I'm not like how I used to be when I could just sit and... Sitting and work and be like, oh yeah, yeah, I've got nothing better to do. I better flip my cell phone and, and play some games. Now, nah, nah, those days are over. Now I just, I'm too busy. I don't have time for that anymore. So, yeah, I probably won't have any reason to use Google Points. 
I guess maybe I'll just still kind of fuck around with Fire Emblem Heroes, but, you know, it's just like as you've been seeing, I probably will not take it very seriously. And if I do quit, you know, that's just how it is. Wouldn't be too surprised. But I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to continue and try to enjoy it for what it is and leave it at that. Anyway, I thank you all for watching. Until next time.